Okay, this is video number two. I just have a few more things to fill in, and then I'm gonna turn you loose to do the rest. Answers to um, these questions go like this. Number seven, English has about, well, it has about a million words. That's way more than any other language. Again, because English is quite accepting and because it's so widespread in influence uh, nowadays, we just pick up words. The closest language in word count is French, but it only has 750,000. So, yeah, 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 we got more. Why does English have so many words? The accepting culture, especially back in the, the big migration, the melting pot of America, as you know, we had French and Italian and, and Jewish, you know, people all coming in. Um, some cultures and languages have like institutions that try and keep the language pure and set rules for it. The French has an académie that says, oh, you guys may not say le popcorn, you must say le maïs éclaté. Um, but the teenagers don't, and too bad. Um, the Navajo Nation has kind of a group that watches over the Navajo language to make sure that it's not being corrupted, to keep their traditions pure, which is just fine. Um, English has not been like that. We're just like, ah, bring it on, okay? And then when you think about the world superpowers that have had such an influence on language, the last two main world superpowers have been England and the United States. I mean, the sun never set on the British Empire. We got words from all over the place. So for this blank, put global influence of England and the US. Number eight, what group of people have the most influence on language change? Who gets to add new slang, new expressions, new pronunciations? Who gets to say, eh, let's say it this way instead of that way, and that will be better, and let's just do it? Is it old people? Young people? People with doctorates in language that sit around in their Harvard offices and make up uh, better ways to speak? No, uh, it, it's young people, and in particular, young females, and in particular, young teen girls. Um, think about young teen girls that you know. In fact, I would actually say like starting from about age eight to about age 14, um, both culturally and sort of um, wired linguistically in their brains, young teen girls tend to be inventive with their language and use language to form friendships and to be, create clubs and be part of an in-group, to be cool, you know, that might try and exclude others. They tend to play with it. Um, even right now, I have darling, like, nine-year-old and 12-year-old uh, nieces, and when we're having family dinner, they are going around put, slipping little notes, and they're very, very sweet. Like, they'll give you a little present or a friendship bracelet, and it will say, um, a, a treat from the SSS. And I don't know what SSS stands for. I think it's something like Secret Service Club. Um, it's very cute and sweet. Um, but they're, they're playing with it. They're making up a club with some secret codes um, that only, only they know. Now, if that catches on, it really drives language change, okay? You know, young men participate as well, but again, culturally and linguistically, um, neuro-linguistically in their brains, they tend to be a little more conformist and want to speak like others and not be quite as, as creative in language change. Now, guys, don't feel bad about that because guess what? Guys are much better at sound effects they play with sound, whereas girls tend to play more with, with words, which is kind of interesting. Okay, now the rest of the worksheet, you're kind of on your own, okay? Please use the internet if you don't know the answer. I don't wanna see blanks, because the internet will help you find them. So turn the page over. Let's talk it through just for a second. Um, oh, look at that, see, that's easy. You get exam from examination. What about fan, though? an enthusiast, like I'm a sports fan. I bet you don't know that it comes from the word fanatic. I'm a fanatic for that. Um, okay, so I, I know for sure there's gonna be like three of those that you won't automatically know. Look them up. Same thing here, breakfast, lunch into brunch, squirm, wriggle into squiggle. Look them up if you don't know them. Look up the acronyms if you don't know them. AWOL. Absent without leave. 
then when you get to the end and are looking at the eponyms, I'm going to have you learn specifically about the word guy and where we get the word guy. It's a weird story. Okay? It's got this whole history bit to it and a little bit more about how that history became a word. All right? And once you're done learning about that, I'm going to have you look up three. Oh, interesting. It says three, but there's four. Eh, look up four. Ha ha. Um, Google something like eponyms in English, and you're going to find more interesting little histories about people who got their names to something, like the Earl of Sandwich who invented the sandwich, right? Uh, Mr. Braille. You know, give me the brief history. Ah, it's because this guy invented this cool thing in 1792 and got his name for it. Okay. Um, when you're done, you can, most, most students just take pictures of the work and just upload it as a picture. That's just fine. Um, some of you are tricky and can do like writable PDFs. Oh, I don't know what you, what you do. Um, but, but you're welcome to just submit this like it was a math problem. You just number one and here's the answers. Okay, so you just open a text document. You can do that, especially if you don't have a printer. That's just fine. Okay, hope it goes well and you learned something. See you later. Goodbye.